If you're out in the field and you need to charge your packs, using a car battery is a fine way to do it. An obvious thing to do would be to charge off the cigarette lighter plug, but there's a couple reasons why that may not be the best idea. For one thing, some cars only fuse the cigarette lighter plug at 10 amps, and some chargers might need to pull a little bit more than that. Many modern cars fuse the cigarette lighter plug at 15 amps, which is, well frankly, based on the wiring in your car, that's probably all you should really pull, and it's probably enough to charge most batteries at a rate that most people would be happy with. But there is a bigger issue, and that is that if you are charging batteries, there's always a risk that the batteries will go off in flames, and if that happens, you don't want it to happen inside the cabin of your car. I have literally, I'm not making this up, seen a LiPo light on fire underneath somebody's hood. And thankfully, they were able to just toss it off onto the ground before their whole freaking car went up. If it had happened inside the cabin, it would have been really bad. Now you might think, why don't I just get one of these extension cables? I'll plug in to the cigarette lighter, I'll run it outside of the car, and I'll charge outside of the car. But that's also a bad idea. These extension cables are not designed for high current use. They're designed for like trickle charging a battery at a few hundred milliamps or maybe even an amp. But if you try and charge packs off of this, pulling three, four, five, six, eight, ten 10 amps, the voltage sag is gonna be so much because of the resistance of the wire that your charger probably will just, just shut down. At least that's been my experience. So what we're gonna need to do is get up underneath the hood. So, we've got to connect directly to the battery. And you might think, okay, I'll just use alligator clips. And alligator clips work okay, especially if you have a great big honking battery with the terminals just laid out there. But more and more, modern cars hide the terminals away. I don't even know if you can see that. They're trying to risk, limit the risk of fires and such, and they kind of tuck the battery terminals away. So getting alligator clips on there is not so freaking easy. And that is why what we're gonna do today is we are gonna install a permanent charging lead on the battery terminals of this car. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. Well, the first thing I gotta do is get at the battery, and on this car, at least, it is tucked away somewhere where it's not so easy to get at. We gotta remove these little pins, and that's gonna lift off. I'm gonna guess that this is not a metric nut, seeing as this is an American car. Are you for real? Ford. Why is this a 10 millimeter nut? Are you kidding me? Now, what I'm working with here is this power lead. Um, it comes with this plug. I don't know the name for this plug, but it's a standard plug used by trickle chargers and battery tenders and so forth. It is 10 gauge wire, and you are gonna want 10 gauge wire. You want the thickest wire you can, because we are the chargers pull some amps. It's fused at 15 amps, and you definitely want one with a fuse and uh, it's got these ring terminals pre-installed. Mine is only two feet long. You definitely want it as short as possible because again, the longer the wire, the more voltage drop you're gonna get when you're charging. Hmm. Now, for the positive one, we don't have... Yeah. Yes, Dylan? I just want to Yeah? Yeah. Big Daddy's will f you up, Dylan. There's no doubt. You want me to come try to help you? No, I managed to beat him. Oh, how'd you beat him? She a four. Hey, good job. And a whole lot of metal. Yes. The reason there's a safety issue here is that this is a metal wrench, right? So when it's touching this metal bolt, it is positively charged. It has 12 volts running through it. You may not think that 12 volts can do much to you, but you could, you, like, you could literally weld with these freaking things. So if that wrench does make contact with anything grounded, the frame of the car, the negative terminal of the battery, you're gonna have a, you're gonna have a bad time. Which is why you should disconnect that ground lead first. 
Right? Yeah. I'm just hoping that I don't stupidly do that. Well, shnikes. I'm starting to feel like I'm not supposed to be playing with this. It kind of doesn't want to come off. Well, it turns out that uh, this nut here, you're never supposed to take it off. It seems like if you do take it off, then um, you break the little claspy thing that tightens down on this thing and uh, keeps your car battery terminal from coming off. So maybe don't connect to that. Uh, maybe it'd be smarter to connect uh, over here near the fuses where there are these easy to take off screws that seem like. Anyway, once you've got that installed, then you got this handy dandy little uh, plug here. You can use that for trickle charging or your battery if you, if you leave your car in the winter or something. And you can make yourself one of these, which is just a little XT60 plug uh, that you plug in here and you can run your charger off it. I do recommend that you grab a cell checker and plug this guy into your cell checker just to make sure you got the polarity right because if you accidentally wired it backwards then the cell checker won't power up but you wouldn't want to risk frying your battery charger, your LiPo charger. And there you go, that is it. And if anyone knows where I can get a spare one of those little cinchy downy doohickeys that uh, can replace the one I broke. Looks like this. There's a, another piece that is not here. It broke because I was basically, yeah, there's a threads here on the end of this screw are ground down because you're not ever supposed to remove that nut. And I was just like, screw it, you know, what will go wrong? And I took the nut off, and then when I went to put the nut back on, it was basically cry. I could totally see where the threads are ground down, so you never remove that nut. Uh, and then it just shattered this cast piece down on the bottom. So if anybody knows what that is and where to get a spare one, I'm going to need one of those. And um, <laughs> I am going to leave this in the video because it's fucking hilarious. But, uh, there you go. I guess I won't be driving my car until I get another one of those stupid things. I've been flying, y'all. <laughs> what are you doing in here? The least you could do is subscribe or join my Patreon or... Like, just, here's another video I picked out for you. Jeez.